Hey everybody, welcome to this week's Geek Storm. It's August 12th here in the world of Indiana. We are currently <laughs> filming live at our favorite toy store in the entire world, Kokomo Toys and Collectibles. Filmed in front taunted, of a taunted, live taunted, studio apparently. audience. <laughs> located at 111 East Sycamore in downtown Kokomo. It is the crown jewel of Geek Street and is well worth visiting anytime. Today I am joined by my very good friend, Michael Allen Harrison. He punched his geek card this week by going to C2E2. I got busy over at Gen Con. Crazy stuff happened. But, Mike, kick it off, buddy. Oh, so many people died. <laughs> We like yes. to start the show off yes, with, death, with deaths. That way it can only be up from here. That's exactly right. So let me bring it down right away. Okay. First off, you have legendary actor Paul Sorvino. Okay. Um, probably, you know, you'd, you'd know who he was if you saw his face, but he was in Goodfellas. He was the Polly, the guy that was the, the head of the family. Uh, then after that, we had Roger Mosley, who was, as you know, TC, one of your favorites from uh, Magnum P.I. Go ahead. I love, I'm, I'm a huge Magnum P.I. fan. Um... Burt Reynolds, Magnum P.I., those are the two mustaches. Wow. Right there. Sure. Those, if yeah. there's a Hall of Fame, yeah. if there's a giant statue uh -huh. made out of some uh, Native American mountains somewhere that are famous right. in South Dakota, uh -huh. it would be uh, it'd be Burt Reynolds, Sam Elliott, Tom Selleck's Magnum P.I., those mustaches okay. are the three. And T.C. was a great character. Sure. Um, you know, by the time that they came around with that, there were, uh, I don't want to make it into a thing, but... He was like probably the first black actor that I saw on a TV show that it didn't matter. Like I didn't think, oh, that's the, that's a black guy right. or that's a guy they added for that role. Right. He was just a great character. They a chose fun him, dude. Yeah. And I like I wanted to, I wanted TC to give me a um, tour Hel of the right. of the Big Island <laughs> in the cool helicopter right. and just hang out with him because yeah. so um, you know bum, bummer yeah. for Sean. Yeah, that's too bad. Uh, also in, in the. Uh, in the geek world, uh, we did lose Nichelle Nichols, who was a uh, Lieutenant Uhuru, or later on Commander Uhuru. Um, captain? I don't think she ever made a captain. I think she was cat she made captain. Did she? Okay. Uh, so, uh, she passed away. Long life. I don't know how old, but she's been around. 80 plus. Yeah, long time. And uh, I think we're down to Shatner and Sulu. Oh, and uh, Chekhov. There's three left. Is he still alive? Chekhov's still alive. Okay. Yeah. Oh, I'm thinking of... Uh, the uh, Abrams, yes. Check off. Okay, and then uh, and then also, unfortunately, we did lose Olivia Newton-John, who's uh, 73 years old, and uh, just a legend. Uh, probably the biggest star of those of those four. Um, it, maybe not in number of work or body of work, but definitely in name recognition and, and worldwide recognition Greece. for sure. I mean, Greece and Xanadu. Yeah, that was enough. And let's get physical. That was enough. I've seen Greece literally, literally. Uh -huh. I've seen Greece 12 times. Really? Yeah. I've I, I, my it's it's one of my wife's favorite movies, mm -hmm. but. Crazy enough, her favorite, mm -hmm. number two. Oh, dumb. She loves number I two. I immediately lost this, I lost all respect for your wife. I think what it was, was she's about our, she's our age. Mm -hmm. She's she's right in between. Mm -hmm. It was when HBO did that thing, where if you had HBO, yeah. it was a big deal right. when you were a kid, because sure. that was new. Yeah. And they showed the same movie like three or four times oh, a yeah. day. And that's how I saw Grease so many times. And I think Grease 2 was hers, mm -hmm. where she was spending the summer with a friend yeah. or a cousin, yeah, yeah. and it played three or four times a day, yeah. so they watched it. So by the time it was done, that was their grease, they knew all the songs. So I know she had some health problems, um, which no, was- No, Chris is doing all right. No, not, I mean, Olivia John. Oh. And she also had, and-, and Yeah, she's called Death. Do you remember that super weird thing that one. happened with her like in, in the mid 2000s with her husband or her partner? Yes, I mean. So he, okay, her, her partner, boyfriend, whatever, like in 2005, he, he disappears. He goes out fishing on a fishing boat. Yes. Disappears. Four years later, Dateline or somebody tracks him down, and they find him like in Miami or Mexico, working on uh, doing a uh, fishing tours and stuff like that. He's completely he he left her, but also you know just faked like, his death and just decided disappeared. Yeah, whatever you know. So it was kind of weird. I feel bad for her, you know. Well, I mean, I mean who knows? I mean, we'll never know. You never, but, you'll never know. Relationships are crazy, but, you know. But definitely, uh, he was the one that she wanted. How many times did you watch Xanadu? <laughs> never. I've never seen never, Xanadu. Oh, you should watch it at least once. I've never seen Xanadu. It's, uh, she's, like a, she's like a muse uh -huh. is what her thing is in that. And yeah. It's got some great music. I believe that's where uh, We Can Do Magic comes from. Um, you can do magic. It's a great song. Highly recommend it. Um, love Roger Mosley. I think the, the big thing on there, though, for geeks has got to be 
Michelle Nichols. For sure. That's a big deal. Yeah. Um, credit is the first on-screen biracial kiss, but I believe that's been debunked. If you do the deep research on it, there was uh, some variety type uh, show or one of those yeah, drama sure. of the weeks Maybe. that they had something like that on. But it is the most widely known one. And so, and let's face it, Shatner got to make out with anybody. And hey, so Uhura was hot. Wasn't she the first uh, regular recurring character on a on, on a... On a TV show? She might have been. I don't know that for a fact, but she was definitely... She's groundbreaking. Um, no, yeah, no, I mean, no doubt. A lot of people in NASA um, mention her as one of the reasons that they got into it. And I think there's like a famous thing behind the scenes where she got into it with somebody in one of the movies... Like some Klingon comes through and they're like, oh, the communicator's not working. We can't translate the Klingon. Mm -hmm. She's like, I've been doing communications for how many years mm -hmm. with the Klingons and I don't, I don't speak, you're saying I don't speak Klingon. <laughs> is that, is that where we're going with this? I don't, I don't speak Klingon? Because I think I want to pick some of it up by now. Yeah. So. And that's something they changed over when they did the Abrams versus she was flu fluent in dozens and dozens oh, yeah. of languages, uh, you know, and she had, di you know, whatever. Uh, so that's, that's sad. Too bad, but hey, on the people who are alive, didn't you go to uh, Gen Con? Were there a lot of live people there? There was about 50,000 people. Oh, wow. Um, up from last year's 35, where it was a cap. Okay, right. Um, so this year we're up to, they're saying, these are the numbers that are Gen Con are giving out. Sure. But I was there, um, it was a sea of humanity again. <laughs> people are saying it's down from the 70,000 from 2019, the pre-COVID, but, and I could be wrong about this, I think 2019 might have been the 50th anniversary. Is it 2018 or 2019? So you throw in the 50th anniversary of something, sure. and people were coming out of the woodwork. People who hadn't yeah. been in years were coming. People were making a pilgrimage to it. So those numbers were, were up over what they were anyway. Mm -hmm. But 50000 for downtown Indianapolis, I am sure, is several million dollars of food and hotel, oh, yeah. taxes, yeah, yeah, yeah. parking. Yeah. I paid $54 for parking one day because I made the mistake of parking in the west and right across the street. Mm -hmm. Normally I park in uh, you know, Scooby-Doo out. No, I always park in the mall, mm -hmm. which is like 20, 20 bucks, sure. 20, 30 bucks. But I will say this, at $54, <clears throat> here's what I got for my 20 or 30 extra dollars. Okay. I walked out of the convention, mm -hmm. I walked across the street and I got in my car. Yeah, that's nice. I, after you've walked, me and uh, Nick, I think walked over 50,000 steps something crazy like that. And for a fat dude who doesn't ever walk, mm. I think normal people try to walk 10,000 steps a day. We were in three days up to like 50,000. Mm. So that's like going to Disney World or an amusement park sure. kind of steps. Sure. Um, we got a lot of steps in. I got some exercise. Good. It hurt. I didn't like it. Good. And it also made me realize I need to do a little bit more of it if I want to keep doing these cons. Cause sure. holy cow. Right. That, uh, well, yeah. and also if you yeah, just want to motivation. live too. Nah, 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 nah. What's to live for anymore? <laughs> Look, have you turned on the news lately? I know, it's Trust great. me, check it's it great. out early might not be that bad at Things are looking up, you ask so, me, but, <laughs> you know, <laughs> but whatever. It's been, it's been a little crazy. What was your favorite thing you saw, happened or bought? Happened or bought? Gen Con is a you weird one. Gen Con's, for me, Gen Con is always this, and it's the cheesy thing to say, but you know me well enough to know I don't bother. You're to cheesy. Care. Well, I don't care about that, but seeing friends. Because okay. this is one that friends come in mm -hmm. traditionally from other countries that mm -hmm. I only see at Gen Con. Mm -hmm. I didn't see any, like Alaska. any out of country. You know, I used to live in Alaska. <laughs> I got some friends that just came back. I can't wait to catch up with them about it, um, see my statue and all that. Um, but I, did, I saw friends from out of state that I don't see very often, and so that's always a highlight. Um, I didn't run any games. That's usually number two is me running games for people. Mm -hmm. But they still have the mask policy, which I believe in. Big, I'm up on mask, but if I want to run a game, oh. it's already hard enough when you're in a room with a bunch of other games running to hear the person across right. from you with right. no barriers. Right. Now, they're wearing a mask, and I'm wearing a mask. Your hearing is not great. Yeah, I can't hear it real. And then I have to emote. Uh, we got a couple of GMs in the room, and emote is a, it's a big part of the game, getting it across. You've GMed with me, or you've run games where I've GMed before. Sure. And getting you know those things across, and with a mask, I, I lose. It's like a, an actor behind, you know, when they get behind a mask and they complain about. Mm. I can see that because. So next year, I plan on going back to doing that. You were at C2E2. This is what? actually what I wanted to kick it off with. Oh, okay. But the biggest controversy in all of geekdom yeah, in easily the year, mm -hmm. if not more, the thing that will s easily send me off on a soapbox and start preaching for the rest of the episode, how was C2E2? Uh, it was fine. Um, I honestly didn't... Because you weren't a part of this. No, you, no, you I know. You weren't involved in any of that part. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, uh, Kai and I went, and uh, it was kind of a last-minute thing. So we went, and uh, it was definitely the largest convention I've been to in a very long time. I think I went to Chicago Comic Con, or which would have been Wizard Con, or whatever it was, uh, I'm gonna say six, six years ago or something okay. like that. And, um, 
and that's not the one that was that's at McCormick. You went on Saturday, right? Yes, I went Saturday Ooh, only. Busy day. It was busy, uh, but we got there at ten, and there wasn't. I, you don't. They don't have lines anymore. They've got giant queues. You know, yes. as wide as this building, that many people are yeah. moving forward at the same time. And that makes things so much different. You're, um, so uh, that worked out pretty good. Uh, very busy. Very big. Uh, we we did a we did a once through, and maybe stopped four or five times, and it took us two two and a half hours to do a once through. Uh, so that was that was uh, fun. Stopped and ate lunch. Um, went and um, where we eat at? Because Chicago, it's like in the middle of Chicago. No, no, we ate lunch in the in the place oh, in the in the food. in the cafe. Well, yeah. they had uh, one of them had uh, some deep dish pizza, and that's Ooh. what Kyan wanted, and so that's no what we had. Good kid. Um, He's he's awesome. <laughs> so uh, we did that, so and it was fun. Right. And um, then uh, I had a, my uh, Mr. Knight costume I took with me, and that's specifically why I wanted to go anyway, because you're cosplaying. I, yeah, and and uh, I've, I've toned that down quite a bit. This is this is a very you know simple thing. It's it's basically a, a suit, um, but um, I went and I wanted to do a uh, this photographers there do little half hour photo shoots and stuff like that in different locations. So I did that. And uh, we had fun. It was a good time. And uh, the one thing I'm I'm recently a, a whatnot sailor, and whatnot had seller, and whatnot had a huge area, almost like a um, I don't know, like they just had they just had like a Wizards of the Coast yeah, type sure. area. It was it was monstrous. I'm, I mean, I'm in the business. I've never been to the site yeah. until you mentioned it to me, yeah. and a couple people online have mentioned it to me. I've never heard of this before. It was uh, it was big, and I didn't I didn't ahead of time since I didn't I didn't do any research. I felt bad for not doing research because Kyan wore his uh, his um, Hellfire Club T-shirt and he, he kind of dressed like Eddie Munson and, and we got there and didn't know it. But if we had, if we had come on Sunday, there was an Eddie Munson flash mob of like a hundred of them, That's and they great. all took a, did a photo thing. And that that had been he'd love that. But I didn't know I didn't know what what not was doing there and what sure. you as a seller or buyer could do while you were there. But they had a monstrous setup, and I guess they were doing give, give, not giveaways but uh, exclusives. That was the, that's the big thing right now in, in on, on the apps and even on eBay is is all these exclusive covers. Comics Comics Cubed might have yeah. an artist in which they they ask Marvel, hey, can we do a special cover for Amazing Spider-Man 14? And you get that artist to do it, and it's official, and you're the, you're the only place you can get them. I think it's it's either, it's between three and five thousand copies. So right. if I wanted the Comics Cubed exclusive, right. I have to agree to take three to five thousand copies of that book, pay right. for them up front, right. then they have to approve. Like I could choose you to be the artist. Right. They still have to approve it. Right. And probably approve the actual finished artwork. Right? Oh yeah, the whole, be, they're going to approve like everything. This. So that that's a big deal having it having it officially done. So what exclusives are a big deal? There were what not exclusives, and that's why we're that's what we're getting ready to talk about. There there's a uh, a company called Black Flag. I think Black Flag. Black Flag Woo! did. Well, there uh, was. There is now. We'll see. Three. They did three exclusives. Okay. And, we, and I'm going to tell you everything I know, which is not a lot. So you sure. probably if Keep, you all right, if you've before, watched a lot, go ahead. Before we get into anything, it's mm -hmm. our opinion. This is not necessarily fact. It's what we believe. It is what we've heard. Sure. Don't sue. It's, that, Mike Dukes. That's who you it, sue. Yeah, exactly. So Black Flag did three exclusives. They did a uh, a few years ago a uh, facsimile of uh, Ultimate Fallout number four, which is the first appearance of Miles Morales. A facsimile of that came out. Yes. Okay. The facsimile is an exact reprint, including right. the original ads, original letters page, everything except the trade dress on front traditionally has whatever the new price is. So when Ultimate Fallout came out, it was probably a $2.99 comic. I would imagine that the facsimile version was $3.99. Yes. And Marvel has produced several facsimiles themselves, including the first appearance of Moon Knight and several other sure. characters. Sure, sure. Um, it's theirs, really theirs cool. they own it, they can do what they want with sure. it. Sure. Okay, so um, this company called Black Flag Gets a hold of I don't know how many I don't know how many they well, did. Probably between three and five thousand would be my guess. I don't know because they didn't go through Marvel, so they so they didn't. Uh, so they right, can do whatever so, they want. But they did. I don't know. Did they? To, to get the facsimile originally, yes. Yes. Okay. To but get that book, that they decided they wanted to make it an exclusive by adding an acetate cover, which is just like thin clear plastic. They added staples to it, so instead of having two staples in a cover like a, a comic book normally would, they folded the acetate over, probably by hand in a garage like this and and uh, put extra staples in it and called that a variant now. They wanted to call that a variant. They struck a deal somehow with CGC to get it uh, to get a bunch of them graded. Now CGC, okay this is another thing. Certified grading service? Or Certified grading company. Okay. Because they do they do 
cards and they, do they are the posters. most respected, yeah. biggest yes. grader that uh, verifies these things, and they sell at a premium. Their 9.8 compared to the next two companies, 9.8, mm -hmm. will sell for a little bit more. Yes. Even though it's the same grade on the little thing, if you, out of 10, 9.8, if theirs is 9.8 versus a CBCS 9.8, right. it's going to be about a 10% difference. And I'm glad you said 9.8 because traditionally, overwhelmingly, the best grade you're going to get, 99% of the time is a 9.8 is, is their top notch. Rarely, you'll see a 9.9. .9. Even more, super rarely, you'll see a 10.0. They just, they almost don't exist. They're, they're friggin' Bigfoot, okay? They just don't exist. Okay, so if you go to the Let thing right now. Quick. All right, go I ahead. I want to reiterate. I want to reiterate what you're saying. Go ahead. I, I own a store. Uh -huh. You have been there on the day that we have opened the comics fresh from the factory. Right. Pulled out the best out of 100 issues. Yes. Cherry picked it as somebody who's been doing this since 1989. Right. I was a child. I pick out the best one. Then I go with you with the top five. Uh -huh. You pick out the best one. You pick out the same one I picked out. Uh -huh. 9.8. Right. I have never in anything I've ever sent in got higher than a 9.8. Me either. In fact, 9.8 is what I expect as my high bar. Right. I don't believe 9.9. .9, I don't believe 10. Right. They've even stated in certain things somewhere that... Every book starts at a 9.8. A perfect book starts at a 9.8. Right. And for it to get to a 10, there has to be something special right. about that book. Right. I don't know how you get it special. So, yes, to say that these are rare, yeah. So, of these three, these three variants that they created, okay, um, CGC has like three tens, four or five nines, and then they go into some 9.8s. Okay, that just doesn't happen. Okay, number two, or number three, or number whatever, whatever number we're on. Okay, uh, that book didn't go through Marvel as as a variant. Yes, they bought the facsimile from Marvel. Whenever they bought it, they could have bought it last year when it came out. I don't know, but it wasn't re resubmitted or reapproved by Marvel as this is a variant. When they slapped on the acetate, put it, put more staples in there. Now, adding the more staples should have been a thing that would have downgraded the book because from the manufacturer, it didn't come with with four staples, it came with two staples. So there's a bunch of holes in your book now. You got more holes in your book, and uh, so CGC should have downgraded, they, they all should have been a maximum of seven. 7.0 should have been the maximum grade on every single one of those books, but they've got some 9.9s and some 10s, okay? And uh, then they give it a blue label, which the blue label, is the is the universal label as you know this is a, this is a good book it's not been altered it hasn't been it hasn't been worked on or whatever so it's original yes, parts from yes, the factory yes. straight off the the line You're right but you can get a green label which means that it's qualified in some manner right. that it's been doctored you can get a purple label which is probably what this should have got which means it has been altered or restored in some fashion right um, what I think it happened with this is. They did order an exclusive because I think it had a different cover or something on it. Cleeting Crane or somebody like that. That That's was the, the, ghost, the Ghost Rider and the uh, other one had... had uh, All right. Diff diff so what I think they did crane. was they ordered these facsimiles. They then, once they're done selling them, have X amount left over. Well, we can't sell them. Nobody wants them. So what do we do to sell these facsimiles? We add this acetate cover and call it a variant. And I think that's what happens. So I think the facsimile itself, the actual book that's been covered by this is original, authentic. Oh, it is. No question. I think that went through yes. Marvel. Yes. I think Marvel sold them yeah. that stuff. That was all good. Yeah. It's the aftermarket edition yes. that's the problem. Yes. And the bigger problem for me is that CGC is giving these things tens. Yes. And I've seen this happen. Tens and blue labels. And I've seen this happen before recently where a gentleman who's a big time YouTuber with some weird hair, uh -huh. um, he sent in a bunch of Turtles books uh -huh. from Ronin, which was that strange odd sized book. Yeah. He had an artist do art. He remarked them. Right. He had two or three tins on remarked books. Right. Now I can't send in a Ronin, I could have ordered a thousand copies of Ronin as we know, uh -huh. picked out the very best one, sent that in, and I'm gonna get a 9.8 if I'm lucky. Right. He somehow picked out enough copies, then had an artist draw on it. That entire time adding pressure and all this other crap to this book. And somehow that ended up with a 10. Yeah. These guys somehow magically took a piece of plastic, which is not a soft piece of plastic. These things, you know, don't fold naturally. They somehow managed to get this on the book 
with a stapler, right. staple this thing on the spine, and somehow do it so perfectly right. that it got a 10. It somehow was better than 99.99% of all the books that literally came off the line hot, picked up from them, and given to CGC's hand. Like, right. here it is, sir. Yeah. Nope, that's a 9.8. But yours, yours, which has been handled, put in a box, shipped to you, then somehow put onto this other thing, and all of a sudden, the crap, somehow that got a 10. Yeah. CGC, you done, you done screwed the pooch. So Marvel has, Marvel themselves have come out and says, that's not our book. That is a, they called it a bootleg. I, yes, I and, agree. And eBay has been taking them down. eBay has been taking them down as unofficial, uh, unauthorized things, uh, and they're not, if they're on eBay, they're not, they're not there very long. So it quick. I didn't get one. I didn't even know they existed. So, I don't want one. So, but cool. here's the thing: is because of us talking about it, every yeah. YouTuber on the planet talking about yeah. it. This book is now famous. Yeah, it's it's more infamous than famous. Right. But that doesn't matter. The amount of attention it's drawn has just skyrocketed it's the crazy. price. And this means nothing to a lot of people. We get it, okay? We understand that. But this is what I do for a living. Right. If like, it, this if isn't it, a maybe for me. It's if it's something where you buy you buy a Ford, whatever car you buy, and a guy comes in and he takes it and he changes it and changes the logos and does the whatever, and then comes out and wants to sell it to you as this is a special edition Ford. Well, it's not a special edition Ford. It's something some uh, Elroy did in his garage and he wants to sell it to you at a at a marked up price or make it more valuable. And before I do that, I'm going to get hold of Edmonds and I'm going to get a hold of of uh, uh, Green Book, what, Blue Book value, and I'm going to I'm going to somehow make a deal with them that they'll say that this is a perfect car. This is the perfect car, and it's official. That's what that's what just happened. Now let's let me let go it on Black Flag themselves. Yeah. They They're going to do three more. They say. It. Well, we'll see about that now. I don't know. We'll I see. imagine that ah! is done. I don't know. Uh, I imagine Marvel's lawyers have called up, knocked on the door. Uh, but here's what they also did. Now, this is hearsay. I wasn't there. Mike was there, but wasn't there part of this. We didn't see it. Everybody is saying this is what happened. Okay. They opened up. People had VIP tickets or somehow got in early. They're in line to get this book. Mm -hmm. They have supposedly 750 copies. Supposedly, according to everyone in the world, YouTubers, influencers, and retailers somehow were allowed to go straight to the front of this line. One report is is that one of these guys bought 125 copies. Keep in mind, this book was a facsimile edition for $3.99. They had an acetate cover and were selling it for $75. 75 bucks. 125 copies. People in line did not get copies of this book. And yeah, the other thing being reported is that by the time the 15th guy got in the, got in the line, got to the front, that $75 book, Black Flag was now selling for $100. They raised the price while you were in the line to buy the damn book. Limited limited quantities are a thing. That's just the way they do it. But to let somebody, to let any one person, but let alone just because you're an influencer or a retailer, get up in front of everybody else and buy the things that are obviously going to be for resale, oh, yeah. that, that sucks for the people that, that are standing in line. Here's my thing is release the name. Show that's This is the only thing that makes me wonder because everybody's saying this happened, but nobody's shown a video. Yeah. In this day and age of phones, I just have a hard time believing somebody didn't whip out a phone yeah. and record this. Because if that's a big name influencer slash YouTuber, whatever, let us know who it is. Because mm -hmm. will, they will be ended, like instantly. Nobody will do business with them. Yeah. They're going to be done. So... We had Gen Con open up, lots of announcements. We had CTE2 open up, lots of announcements. I believe there was a big anime con this last weekend as well. But the only thing anybody is talking about is Acetate Gate. Yeah. And um, yeah, it's gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna keep going for a while until the other competitor. I'm sorry. It's gonna keep going until things quell down and we get some insight. CGC has released one thing already, but the truth is, is this, it's a universal horror movie, and all the peasants have shown up with pitchforks and um, you know fire, and they're looking for the monster right now. It doesn't matter what you did, you yeah. screwed up. CBCS, who is their main competitor, they're the number two guy, has already come out and said, that's ah! the best yeah. it should have got was 7.0. Right. Um, in fact, it should have got even you know this, this, and that, and the fact that they got tens is just crazy. The fact that it got tens to me, is insane. That's another thing, and I don't. I, I made a big deal at the beginning about the being the 9.9s and the, and the tens, and 
don't let that seem like sour grapes because we don't get the the tins. Sure. Okay. Because here's what has to happen to put staples in a book. You have to open it, put it on a saddle stapler, and staple it and reclose it. Okay. Most of the stuff that we send in for grading, the newer stuff that we send in for grading, is never even opened, period. No. Because you break, there's color on the back. And if you open it, you break that color, okay? So that's got to be the case there. All, none of that stuff can be, can be perfect. It just can't be. We have, again, <laughs> we have, I have pulled books off. You've been there, brand new, out of the box, and press them. These are brand new books, right. and I'm still going to press them. Right. Send them in to 9.8. So, yes, when I see these guys sending in art-covered books that somehow somebody handled well enough to draw an entire picture on yeah. and not put a single ding into it, yeah. I'm sorry, he's not an angel or a demon. I don't believe he's got those powers. I wish, you know, I wish, I wish some alien species would come down and send their best hunter down to this area <laughs> to CGC <laughs> and little lasers oh. is what I would wish. Hey, did you see Prey? I did it. Oh, it's good. It? Uh, it's not like fantastic, like everybody, like a lot of people are saying. It's good. It's a Predator movie, right? Yeah, it's a Predator it's movie. It's a it Predator is. movie that was made for streaming services? It was made for Hulu, yes. Okay. We're only released on Hulu. It's their biggest uh, their biggest release ever, their biggest uh, streamer ever, more than Handmaids or, or any anything they've had. Uh, more people have watched this than anything. And it's supposed to be the very first time that a Predator comes to Earth and um, comes against some Native Americans. And uh, so it was really cool. It was a very, you know, very down tech story. It was very, sure. it was a, it was beautifully shot and, and just, a, it was a nice movie. I want to see it. This isn't anything against me not wanting to see it. I'm right. not a huge Predator fan, to be honest. That's right. not a big selling point right. for me. But yes, um, anytime you add that Native American element, I'm in. There was that one they did years ago where the Vikings came over and mm -hmm. they adopt Pathfinder or something like that. That's there what was it was some, called, Pathfinder. There's been a couple like yep. that. Anytime you involve that, I mean, I'll read Eric the comic book. Oh, so, boy. <laughs> you know, anything that involves that concept, sure. I'm in for it. I think that's, that's great. Sure. Um, Sandman over on uh, Netflix. Uh -huh. Man, one, this is one of the hottest selling comics of all time. Yes. It is beloved. It is the book that I was selling back in the day that professors, teachers, all the hip kids were reading. And that's why I refuse to read it. It's definitely one of the books, <laughs> much like Watchmen, where people look at it as a an art form to legitimize reading just regular comics. You know, they like, well, what about Sandman or what about what about Watchmen? Those are those are those are literature. You know, uh, it's 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 an adult. I don't say adult because they're all adults now, but it, it is definitely a, a higher art form than just the average comic. I think. It is beautiful. <clears throat> it's well done. It's well written. It has a storyline that goes through it when it culminates. The whole nine yards. It's got. It's the total package. Neil Gaiman has become internationally famous, and I don't know that he was really well known at all before that book came out. Oh no! So this is his launch. This is what launched his career. Mm -hmm. They have nailed so many aspects. I've only seen the first two episodes, but visually, mm -hmm. just nailing things left and right. It is absolutely gorgeous. Um, they do add some elements that aren't in the original story, at least not in the order of which I've read it and now I've seen what we've seen. Mm -hmm. But man, the casting is really good. The uh, cinematography has been great. The story, just in two episodes, is really, I'm sucked all in. Um, and the thing is, like, he's just str such a strange looking character. Yeah. Him and most of the other Endless have this very odd... Um, hue about them. They're like this off-white mm -hmm. kind of thing, and uh, it is just he just he looks alien-esque. The first time you see him with that weird helmet in yeah. the books, you almost wonder if he's not an alien. Right. And then eventually you find out that comes off. Yeah. But man, they did a good job. Yeah, the casting and, and uh, whatever special effects they use to to uh, do uh, when he's when he's captured and he's all emaciated and everything. I don't, surely that actor couldn't have done that if he did. Good props to him for. for for dropping, and dropping a hundred pounds. Don't overdo it again. Too many, yeah. too many actors have done this uh, rolling diet where they're up and down, yeah. and it has done <clears throat> permanent harm to them. But it's a really, really beautiful show. Uh, Casey and I uh, finished episode four last night. Okay, really liked it. Uh, I can't think of anything that I would change about it. Now I listen. I, I read it when it came out. <clears throat> probably didn't read it again, and then I listened to the audio book of it last year and of this whole story. So that kind of re-familiarized me with it a little bit, uh, but um, the, it, enough of it is, is, is in there that it, that is fresh looking to me. And plus, you, you know how it is when you, you listen to something or read something, you don't always get your, your head movie. Well, this is, this is pretty much what every fan that like those things is going to, is going to want. Sure. And if you, if you have problems with the changes that are made and I know what you're talking about, you're an asshole, so I don't, I don't have anything to say yeah. to you. 
I I I loved Abel. Mm -hmm. Kane's look was just a Kane and my I, I have I love these two characters, mm -hmm. Kane and Abel. Yeah. Uh, from the comic, mm -hmm. Kane has got this very almost Wolverine esque look. He's got such a strange hairstyle and everything else. And they got close to it. Mm -hmm. I don't know if they didn't want to go all the way right. because it wasn't going to be quite right or wasn't going to look right. Mm -hmm. The comic wasn't. Abel comes off almost, in my mind, Abel's a little heavier. I'm on just a little, a couple more pounds. Um, but Kane looked a little, just a little off. Listen to you. But the mannerisms were. I stand by my judgment. So good. <laughs> okay. So loved it. Thought it was great. Can't it was wait good. to see more. It was good. Hey everybody! Thanks for uh, joining us for acetate gate and letting us uh, go on and spew about that but in our lives that's important so be groovy we'll catch you next time <laughs>